Welcome back to the Blue Chip Academy podcast, empowering the next generation of leaders by equipping them with the detailed blueprint to success while using sports as our catalyst. And today we're going to be jumping into a little bit. I'm going to be solo, um, but we're going to get into the transfer portal, which has been crazy in college sports right now. I mean, it opened up this past week. Thousands of players jumped into the portal, and we're going to just talk about it a little bit today on how to use that to the benefit of your career, the risks that come along with it, jumping in, how that can affect the recruiting coming out of high school right now, and just everything around just the transfer portal. Like I said, today I'm going to be dolo, but we're going to dive into this a little bit of a, a lesson about how to what this whole transfer portal means to just the recruiting ecosystem and just how it affects all sports. So first thing that we want to jump into is that, you know, the transfer portal has been driving college sports, the, the game wild, right? It's kind of changed the way uh, teams have developed their roster structure. It gives um, them an opportunity to pretty much create free agency and find players, whether at another school, gives players the opportunity to go to another school and different things of that nature. Essentially, like I said, free agency. But the NCAA transfer portal is a national the National Collegiate Athletic Association, NCAA2A, right? Database and compliance tool launched on October 15, 2018 to manage and facilitate the process of student athletes seeking to transfer between member institutions. So it's fairly new into the whole game of college sports and how it um, operates. And it's interesting now that the schools have used it not really as a weapon, but to their benefit because they have the upper hand. But the way that the genesis of the rule or why it even came about was to give the players more opportunity uh, to move schools, more power to circumvent the coaches uh, to go from school to school. Because just a little history lesson, like when I was coming out of um, coming up through the game or just prior to 2018, you had to go to your coach. Um, an administrator or something and have like a list of people sign off on you to transfer a school and some coaches would use that as a power trip and just not sign the papers man we've had i've had heard coaches uh threaten not to sign papers and release guys from their scholarship and different things of that nature and people thought that that was you know that just wasn't fair for the players obviously the power dynamics in college sports is already kind of tilted but this was an, an attempt to make it more favorable to the players but i don't think we all looked at all the different tentacles that could have been pulled and how they could affect whether it's the recruiting process, players coming up, how players are approaching their college decisions, um, and you th mix in NIL and guys being disappointed or getting offered money in different places. You can jump into this deep water of the transfer portal and really find yourself in sticky waters or just really in a situation that's not the best for you, right? Because there was something about the previous way of doing the things in the transfer portal or just the way college sports operated where you had to go through a little bit of a, a tough phase. Because if I'm, I'm be honest, like I, I played, I was a freshman All-American and there was times where I thought about transferring, right? Where you're just, you're going through growing pains going to college. And I'm just talking to somebody that played both sides as a freshman. And I remember I had thoughts, was like, man, you just get mad. And you're like, man, I want to go somewhere else. I mean, I think there was a, a little stretch where I, I wasn't getting the ball. I, I had a concussion. I wasn't playing as much as I wanted. I was like, man, I'm about to. I had the thought about transferring, but you know, it went away pretty quickly. But but the way the transfer portal works, you never know. It could have opened up a couple of weeks, and you just throw your name in there. You don't know what's going to happen to your career. So I think there are some good things that in the previous system and how it was situated, where guys had to kind of go through a little bit of the obstacles or just the emotional uh, roller coaster that comes with just the transition into college sports, right? Just from getting all the attention from the recruiting process to getting the campus and it not being the same. Maybe you have to compete for a job. Maybe the team's not good. Maybe your coach leaves, right? And it's, and that's not to say that there's a reason to use the transfer portal because we're going to get into it a little bit about why you should definitely <laughs> use the transfer portal, right? So how does it work? A lot of times when people are looking into different schools or throwing her name in the hats, you would, you would be surprised that it happens before December 5th, right? The same way that free agency happens where age, uh, managers or agents are talking to different teams. And there's back channels in college sports happening now where guys are unhappy or there might be a chance where someone might leave. And there's different reasons where it works out to the player's benefit to transfer. So I'm not sitting here saying that the transfer portal is not good for anyone to exercise the option and do it right. We've seen Caleb Williams this past year transfer 
with his uh, coach from Oklahoma to USC. He's probably going to win the Heisman Trophy tonight, uh, Saturday, when I'm recording this. But, you know, there's certain situations where it does work out. Jalen Hurts, for another example, is somebody that lost his job and was able to trans- transition and make a great career in the NFL right now as a starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. So they're just going into it, just remembering that the basis and the genesis of the portal was to help the players and just making sure that they can and making sure that they had opportunities to go to other places and the coaches couldn't block them for whatever reason that may be. So there are reasons, like I said, why you should enter the portal. We're going to jump into those a little bit. So what, what situations are the portal is like essentially made for or where they were thought of when they were coming up with the rules? First thing was like health discrepancies, right? Like whether you're stuck out of school and you're in disagreements with the medical staff and it's just a loss of trust between you and whether it's the coaching staff or the medical professionals. And you can just be like, you know what? Cut my ties here and I'm going to check out another place. That's a great reason. Campus legal trouble. Everyone's, you know, campuses operate differently. There's different rules on campuses that might not just be a legal rule, but maybe you might get on travel at a campus and you just have to start, have a, a fresh new start and transfer and then not go through the coaches and different stuff of that nature. So campus legal trouble. Coaching pushing you out. I mean, players aren't stupid. You can read EQ when play when coaches have the idea that you're on the push out list and they start giving you those cues that your time's up. I mean, there's a chance that you can you can fight and try to earn that spot, but a lot of times when they're pushing you out, you can start getting ahead of the thing and using the transfer portal to your benefit, right? And understanding what options are out there and being realistic about where your next landing spot can be because that's the major thing about the transfer portal is being strategic about it and not emotional but it's not for everybody and it's not something that you just want to run into just out of an argument with your coach one time or just a dis some discomfort where you're at because you see it does work out sometimes when you're uh staying there and there's a lot of different things that come into it, like nil promises and deals we haven't even gotten into that yet i don't know if I'm not sure if NIL deals have been out long enough to where we've seen guys not getting paid their deals that they've been promised out of high school and that being a reason for them to transfer or maybe just not as clear as they thought it might be and they get an NIL deal and they're not playing and it's like, look, I got to get to another opportunity to get on on the field or if another collective starts getting involved into this game and start offering money for guys to transfer. Like we hear that in the the different loops whether it's from agents and managers that sometimes facilitate the different deals or trying to touch base with coaches to see if people are are open to the transition of a player and different things of that nature so the next thing would be if you're out recruited right like if you feel like you're clearly out recruited and this is something that you have to look in the mirror and say because you'll see like hey this guy's better than me or the coach is moving along with this next group of guys these freshmen or whatever the receiver is and the writings on the wall and you see like, you know what? I have to make the best decision for myself. And, you know, I've seen it happen where uh, guys have gotten had great promise, got fizzled out towards the end of their career and transitioned and transferred. And it still worked out. Juwan Johnson is a, a prime example of somebody that, that of that, that was at Penn state transition or transferred to Oregon as a grad transfer laid out there. And then he's in the NFL doing his thing um, as a tight end for the New Orleans saints. Uh, Will Levis is another guy that we've seen. We got recruited, uh, go to, you know, came to Penn State with some good quarterbacks up there and end up transferring to Kentucky. And he's slotted to be a top 10 pick. Zach Coons, another tight end that we recruited up at Penn State that ended up transferring to ODU, who's also going to the NFL. And these are all different situations where the transfer portal actually helps for guys, right? Or actually give them an opportunity to, uh, live out their dreams i mean i'm talking about the guys that transferred and end up still going to the nfl i mean penn state had a corner zach mcpherson trans transferred to texas tech end up going he's in the nfl with the philadelphia eagles so i'm not saying that it's not an opportunity for you to transfer uh make that impact at another team and continue to move on but i'm saying that you have to be very strategic about where you fit your actual value that you bring to the team why are you transferring what's your <laughs> have you made plays where you're where you're at are there is there film is there coaches that are actually just interested in you at all or are you just kind of throwing your name in the hat because i think that's 
where it gets a little bit sticky when you're just like jumping into the portal and not really having a landing spot because in 2000 after the 2019 and 20 cycle 247 did a study and they realized just for f for p p5 players and um p5 scholarship players out of the 47 percent of p5 scholarship players that went into the portal out of all the fbs <laughs> players that went into the portal 47 percent of the players end up dropping down to fcs not getting signed or going to Juco. So that's about half of the players did not end up at the same level or even playing at a uh, FCS level school and end up maybe going Juco and pretty much starting the whole process over. And like, why is that important? Um, it's essentially important because they, I think it's underestimated how hard it is to get ingratiated into a football program, a football organization when you're transitioning in. And you're kind of just kind of find your way, right? You have to make a lot of plays and you have to have someone in there that knows the skills that uh, are needed on the team and that there's a fit for you being there, right? Because, you know, it, it could be a loaded team and there's an open uh, receiver spot and it could be a great spot for you. Or it could be a loaded team and you'll be sitting on the bench as a transfer. I mean, you just have to understand the recruiting process is kind of starting all over again. So it's, it's a level of waters where you're re- running the risk of getting out there and not having a home, uh, losing NIL deals, like recreating your brand. And like I said, there's certain situations where it does happen or it does work out for you, but those are some of the elite players or players that find opportunities that work out for them in a pretty, in a positive way. So you guys make sure you like and subscribe to the Blue Chip Academy podcast. We'll be talking about everything from the recruiting recruiting process, talent acquisition process when you're transitioning, um, to the NFL, transitioning out of the NFL and moving up into your next career and just all the different recruiting and talent acquisition processes within the sports ecosystem, whether it's the agency selection process, high school recruiting, uh, making sure you're picking the right agent when you're going to the next level. And like I said, when you're going through and just becoming a desirable asset as you're becoming an executive, right? Or if you're becoming an entrepreneur, just those different things and using sports as our catalyst to a career that we can bank on. You know, you spend a lot of time in this game and just making sure that the things that we're picking up and learning and the lessons that we're uh, absorbing through this sports business ecosystem, that we're putting them in the right places that we can have an acceleration plan to reach our highest goals. So, um, yeah, so jumping back into it. The next thing I want to talk about is just with the transfer portal and NIL, because that's where it really gets sticky, right? Where you guys want to maybe transfer because of money or... You might get an offer from Collective, which I think will come up pretty soon, right? When you see guys, uh, teams starting to raise money for signing for signing day, <laughs> raising money for signing day, raising money for transfer portal, raising money for uh, all those different things like, to keep guys from going to the NFL, to keep guys from transferring. So the, the whole talent acquisition process in college sports is kind of tossed up. So we're going to try to put a little bit of you know, some, some borders around how you can operate a little bit with just, you know, the reasons why you want to transfer and what you want to look for and different things of that nature. A lot of guys have been using um, agents or managers to kind of navigate this space. I mean, I get a lot of calls from guys that are trying to get in contact with different coaches and seeing if they're interested, not to drop any dads on anybody, but a lot of times this happens at the beginning of the season. It's not like a, a time where, Transfer portal opens and guys are dropping, guys are reaching out to different people. There's a lot of different channels where people are contacting and moving out. But that brings me to the point of just NIL deals and agents get into the mix of it being it's it's free agency in the mix where you're dealing with agents and managers that are trying to find you uh, a landing spot or a right situation. Let's just be real clear to not get into any situations that you'll regret later, right? We're signing a deal or getting into a relationship with an agent that may not have your best interest at hand or just maybe trying to play the long game uh, with you to sign on to you because that's what a lot will be happening in this transfer portal NIL timeframe. And we'll get into it another video about just how to select an agent, what you need to look for, um, what they should be paying for to be completely honest what are they investing in you and do you actually need an agent at all if you're one of those guys right sometimes this new nil opportunities and new il uh ecosystem creates a creates a situation where players in college and you can make enough money so you can pay for your pre-draft process you know like a lot of things where the agent fits in is the player development piece and making sure that you're ready to be a, a lasting piece in the nfl right i know a lot of them will portray 
the aspect of how much money they negotiated in contracts and how many deals they signed, but the first contract slotted and you can pay a lawyer, you know, for an hourly thing. I'm getting, I digress, but we'll get into the agent things, but a lot of times they're going to be trying to, in this NIL space and transfer they're going to be trying to provide value to you in different ways. So just make sure if they are providing values for you, value to you in this transfer portal time, in this NIL space time, that is just very clear on what services they're going to be provided and how much it's going to cost. And always remember LIG is here for any transfer portal, um, NIL consulting for individuals um, outside of our enterprise sales and different things of that nature. But uh, the, the transfer portal also brings up a key thing to for guys coming up in the recruiting process and what you guys need to just really be clear about is that coaches don't have to lean on development as much as they used to right it's like there's an opportunity to get ready-made players for plug-and-play positions that are extremely important sometimes you don't have time to develop a corner sometimes you don't have a plug-and-play running back or a quarterback and different things of that nature so you're looking for the ready-made player that may be in college or that just that different opportunity, someone that you already had a relationship with. Now, what does that mean for high school players? Stop thinking that you're going to get the benefit of the doubt, right? Or that coaches are waiting for you to develop and be ready to step on the field with them. So like take out the guesswork and make sure that you're sharpening your tools and having an objective evaluation of where you are, where you fit and maybe what opportunities um, lie ahead for you, whether it's like at the school, whether it's the right position that you're playing, whether it's the right coaching staff, whether it's evaluating the different situations, because the coaches and all that they have the leverage in this whole NIL game transfer portal uh, world. And to be completely honest, the high school recruits are the one that the ones that are going to take the brunt of it if they're not well informed and understand exactly how to navigate the space. Right. Whether it's offers being thrown out there earlier and earlier and meaning less and less as they're offered. Right. I was the main person saying, like, if you offer a guy like it has to you have to stay in contact or you have to continue to develop because it can't be. I mean, we don't have there's not time for coaches to develop players to the extent of uh, got four to five years. Now, it's a three to four year window with players and coaches. We see them getting fired earlier and earlier if they don't produce so for a coach if i'm if i'm evaluating a coach or if a coach is looking to get evaluated and that's the case and that's my criteria that i have to meet up with you best be sure that i'm going to make sure that i can fill holes or plug holes or any uh anything that in my defense or offense or in my team as fast as possible and sometimes not banking on a developmental player in high school will be the route to go just go for maybe the JUCO player or maybe the player that's transferring from uh, a SEC school that you knew coming out of high school and he's just not happy anymore. So the game has gotten a lot more competitive for recruits coming out of high school. And I do feel for you. I mean, just understanding how things are moving around. So that's why we have the competitive edge and blueprint to success coaching program. So you guys, when you're going through just this recruiting process, you're having objective view and guidance. So you, the known unknown becomes extremely clear so that you're walking through this path of the recruiting process in the best way, man. It's the first entry point into the sports business ecosystem because all the decisions and just the, the whole sports industry strengths, right? And the recruiting process when you're coming in as a player is when you're introduced to it, whether it's to athletic directors, DFOs, um, development officials at the school, deputy ADs, different people. Like that's when you're introduced and that's when they're going to start making up their profile of you until you transition and become an executive. Like the time in college is not that long. So like you want to build a brand at school. You want to have relationships. And that goes back into my next point about the transfer pool that you want to be, be aware of is just how does that affect your brand, right? Like if you're out of school and you're building and within the ecosystem, I'm a firm believer that power ecosystems or power schools that if you like really build it a brand there I mean, it can be very beneficial to you for the next 30 to 40 years and sometimes with this well not sometimes with this transfer portal recreating that brand in another place can be difficult right and it could be difficult depending on what you want to do and that's not like i said talking about the different situations where it makes sense to transfer right like if the, you're in the doghouse like a prolonged doghouse and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's just like, I got, 
I, I can't do nothing, coach. Like, I mean, everything I say, every every move I make, you're upset with me. I mean, I'm still here. Like, I'm out. Like, those are different situations. It's not for, oh, I got a competition coming up in spring ball. Like, I, I, I got to guarantee that this is the right move for me. It's not the, you know, it's not your feelings getting hurt, to be completely honest. If you go through an end of the year evaluation and you say you have to work on all these different things and you have an ability to work on them and you just don't want to, that's not a reason to leave. And NIL, I mean, I would give a little bit more time before we start leaving for NIL deals because we don't know if collectives are paying out different uh, promises yet. I don't think there's been enough evidence of that happening to move on NIL deals. I think sometimes maybe connected to a coach when you're understanding the play calls. I think that's why it worked out so well for someone like Caleb Williams that goes from Oklahoma to USC has his coach has the whole infrastructure around him other 45 or a lot of transfer players that they did have but he's able to you know he has a, a familiar face and a new face in the head coach and be able to work in there but working into a new system as a the only new player that's a that's a difficult thing so we just want to make sure that when you do jump into this transfer portal if you decide to utilize it that you're just that you're using it for the right reasons because like the stats at, you know, 247 said, I mean, 50% of the players that went in from the FBS, FBS level had to transition down. And that's not what you, like, that's not really what you're, that's not what the transfer portal was made for, right? It was to help you out, to give you opportunities and give you a chance to exercise your rights in the right way, not in an emotional way, not just going out and doing all those things, but and that's another thing to we'll jump into, like the the offer posting from the college players. That's that's pretty interesting, man. It's 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 awesome to see guys getting love and attention, but it just brings up to my next point of, you know, you think when guys are going through the high school recruiting process and they're getting showered with attention that you know they're teenagers and and like and it's really cool. You have an opportunity to go to school for free, but now that you're in school for free and you're living out that dream, you know, posting the offers is cool. I mean, I'm not against it, right? I'm not against it. I'm more so talking about the piece of like what it shows is that that level of attention is still attractive, I guess, right? Like, because that comes into it because now we have agents circling around the waters now, right? Like at this age and, and having a way to present real value, whether it's like, hey, I can connect you with this school or man, I can get you an NIL deal or I can give you a marketing advance here and all these different things. Because you guys can hear, you know, I, the the agent I don't have a problem with individual agents so like it's more about the game because a lot of money that the players get for your guaranteed contracts go to the agents and just making sure that they're actually providing a service to the players that the players are paying for and we hear about the stories of players going broke and just never address how much money their mo- their money goes to service providers that don't provide services for them but there's opportunities now like I said for players use nil money pay their own way and kind of use a lawyer to go through their contracts but like I said that's a conversation for a different day, but I'm going into the part of agents and where they're circling around in this recruiting process and this transfer portal because they can be influential, right? Just saying like, oh, I got a deal for you here or this this coach said that he really wants you. Like these coaches have agents as well. They have connections that can talk to DFOs or DPPs and say a word, maybe not, you know, for you to transfer, but to like offer you some type of goods or services and, you know, provide value because that's what they want to do. So just making sure that you have a clear understanding of what you're transferring for and why you are looking to transfer. If that's something that you want to exercise in this new game of transfer portal, NIL rules and all that good stuff, because to be completely honest, I mean, the transfer portal is pretty cool. Like if it's used strategically and not emotionally, right. To make the best decision, um, for your career because what you don't want to do is take the recruiting process lightly because of the transfer portal because it directly affects you coming out of high school right because like I said when you're just evaluating players across the board and we see the media deals we see the conference realignment just recently um, I think it was like 10 F, uh, FCS schools are coming together to create a football only conference just that is getting to the point of like you're showing like the media rights deals are coming to have to pay all these millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. They have uh, the rights to the 
product right like what's on the product is a level of a great game and talent so now the talent acquisition game in college sports is going to be an arms race to an extent and there's going to be a lot of different dealings with agents moving around and like getting promised offers and how to move so just make sure we're making decisions with like the right data that you're having objective guy going through this that's people that know what they're actually doing so you're not messing up your career just on a whim or just on the wrong promise or just a quick buck and like i said if you guys like subscribe to this uh podcast so you guys get all this information um continuously throughout whenever we drop different episodes and like i said we'll be talking about talent acquisition the recruiting process and just everything in the sports business uh ecosystem that the intersection of sports and business all the way up career development um up to the executive search what it means to be a desirable asset making sure that you're taking advantage of this whole process right starting with the recruiting process and uh yeah i think that's where we kind of end up end up with today remember like let's use sports as a catalyst to a career that we can bank on and you guys check in on lig sports group for any information on the capitalization plan for sports in your career i mean getting into the sports industry making transitions um through the transfer portal going through the recruiting process tap in we have consulting um consulting projects we have co- coaching programs um that you guys can get involved with so make sure you guys reach out uh for all those for the individuals and like we've said before we have specialty sourcing uh, nil brand consulting and blue chip academy for um all you guys getting ready to enter this sports business ecosystem ready to take over sports industry so we'll end on that one man you guys thank you and that's the end of this episode of blue chip academy and like again remember use that transfer portal to your advantage making sure you're still using the right information when you're making decisions and you know, sometimes a little obstacle to get over is a is a great thing for your career and if there's opportunities to bet on yourself and jump into that water just make sure you can swim because I think it's cold out there. I mean, like I said, we've seen 50% of the guys that didn't find a home and had to kind of move it on down. So make sure you make those uh, right decisions because there are some success stories as well. But we're all here trying to make sure that these key steps and these critical points in your journey to success are filled out and that you have some of the answers that you're looking for. Like I said, you guys check in, tap in, like and subscribe to the podcast. And my information will be in the link below. Again, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Blue Chip Academy Podcast. Take care.